Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week we have Ross Murphy, local entrepreneur and almost owner of Old Town Grocery. In studio with us as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. I think the main thing that I've I realize or my, my, my finally get it moment is it's an identity thing for me. Um, and I've learned, I'm going to quote a, a wise movie from my childhood. A wise man named Ralph Brinker told his son, Andy, skating is what you do, not who you are. That's great. It's a great movie. What movie is that? Brink. It was a Disney channel movie. Ah, I got to check it out. That's resonated with me in my, uh, more recent years. Um, because, you know, growing up in a, in a business like Old Time, an iconic business in, a, in Lafayette and the community, part of my identity, you know, has always been that and being part of the Murphy family. And it was my whole identity for the longest time, you know, and, and growing yeah, up yeah. in it and, and running the business. And, and there's a lot of beauty in that. But I've had to learn how to separate that. You know, there, there's two parts of me, right? And, and mm-hmm. as men, part of our identity is is work. You know, it's it's biblical, it's it's genetic, right? But I struggle with that in my in my 20s and early 30s, and so I guess what I finally get is that, you know, first and foremost, I'm I'm a child of God. You know, I'm, I'm a I'm a husband, um, you know, a son, a friend, and and I put as much as I can into that. Secondly, you know, I'm a business owner or soon to be business owner, and and. And, and there's a beauty in that and being part of my identity, but I've learned to separate those things. Yeah, that, that is such an important message. You know what I mean? Because I, I'm going to go watch that movie, by the way, and I might cite that in the show notes. But it's so true. You know, my wife's an attorney and in some ways she does identify as an attorney, but that's not who she is. You know, and she says that all the time. Thank you. Thank you for that message. That's great. Like I said, there's a lot of beauty to it. And. Look, when I was younger, it was fun to it be the, cool. the the old time guy, right? That, you know? That's right. Uh, and, and there's a lot of pressure with that as well. But where I struggled was um, I let, because I let my identity get so wrapped up in that, I equated my sense of self-worth with the good and bad days, weeks, month of the business, you know, and, yeah, and what yeah. I what I projected other people, what they thought about me, what I, what the community thought about me. So I had to learn that because of, like I said before, I'm a child of God, I'm made in the image and likeness of God. I'm good, you know, and mm. what I do is good. I might be a jackass sometimes, you know, but, but inherently I am good. And no matter what happens in my professional life, I still am good. Yeah, that's right. Because you know who you are. Right, exactly. Oh, man, I love it. It's a big deal. We could kind of end right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a big moment. It took me stepping away from the business for for three years to learn that. So, you know? so tell me about that. I, I, I envision that you grew up in the business. You, you know what I mean? You're always around there. You guys kept acquiring different things, the building next door, whatever. So I, I, I guess you got a really intimate perspective. And then- As you grew up, like you said, you were kind of the old time guy. How hard was it? And what were some of the circumstances that you can share that that basically made you make a decision that, you know what, it makes sense for me at this point in my life to step away and and go find something else. And then I want to hear about what what brought you back. Man, it was it was the hardest decision I ever made in my whole life. Um, And it took me five years to get to that point of finally making it. It scared the heck out of me. But, you know, not to get into the nitty gritty, but family business is challenging. Uh, <laughs> are you you telling know, me? Uh, especially yeah. one, an, an iconic business that people are looking at and, and and the success or failure of it makes a difference to not just the family, but the, to the community. The, the, the stakes are higher, the pressure is higher. And so, you know, I didn't want to let down my family, you know, my, my extended family, my wife, me and my family, the community. And so all those things came into play and, and, and it took a couple of years to finally be okay with letting it go. Right. It was hard, but I'm, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. And you started like consulting and helping friends start companies and things like that. right? Yeah. I spent some time with a, a, a local tech company, um, way out of my wheelhouse, but it was a, a little drone company. It was really cool. Uh, they're much bigger now. Um, Fly Guys, Fly shout guys, out. Fly Guys, yeah. Uh, a little drone company. A little that's drone company, like yeah, International yeah. now. Really, really cool. Uh, yeah. And then I spent another year with um, a guy named Boyer DeReese with his company. It's now Bayou Carlin Oyster Company. You should have him on your show. Yeah. It was a wholesale frozen food manufacturer. He has a uh, a frozen ready-to-grill oyster kit. 
Genius. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm telling you, it's genius. So I, I went from, uh, you know, iconic restaurant to small startups, uh, it, but it was good for me. It was good for me to, to sow my oats and yeah, step out into the world and see if I can make it. And, and in, in that, in that same time, I, I bought a rent house and flipped that and then got another rent house. And, you know, so did spread my wings a little bit. It wasn't anything wild or crazy, but you yeah, know, it, yeah. for somebody that was on a straight and narrow path for, 33 years uh you know when i when i told my wife i was ready to leave the business she looked at me like i was nuts yeah you know? like, and yeah, i kind of well, was yeah so what brought you back into old time and 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 the old time family of companies old time's a special place it is uh, it and, really is and in and, and the restaurant industry in general it, it's it's hard it's really hard but it's beautiful the the interactions that you get you know with the with the customers but the employees i i love I love the team building aspect of things and to see like one of the w- most wonderful things about what we have at, at old time is that we're so connected with the, the college, the university, yeah, yeah. our staff has a lot of college kids. So we have an opportunity to develop young people, mm-hmm. you know, take them from 17, 18 years old, don't know how to scrub a floor, wash a dish, do anything. And, you know, three, four years later, if we've been blessed to have them for that long, we send them out prepared for life, you know, with, with some bumps and bruises. Um, <laughs> but, but there's a lot of beauty to that. And, and, you know, as I've gotten older, I've appreciated building the management teams, you know, the, not just the college kids, but, but helping, you know, the mothers and fathers and, and helping them as family people with their kids and giving them some vision of how we can grow together. That's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah, I shared with you the very first time I came in the store was during Lent about 28 years ago when I moved here. It is a Lafayette institution, you know. And so you guys have also opened BJ's, which is a similar type deal Mm -hmm. in uh, what, Broussard? My dad, Glenn, he bought bj's in 1997 uh-huh. he had the intention of opening a new old time he was kind of ready at that point he had been in business for 15 years and and found bj's and opened it up and life changed we had he had child number four after a six-year gap and oh, yeah. you know so changed things and then number five came along shortly after that so bj's just kind of stayed bj's um yeah and it has been and honestly a lot of people still don't know it has anything to do with us. You know, I could paint uh, well, it. Well, I'll, I'll walk in there and I can tell instantly. I could paint it red and white and probably, you know, double the sales out there, but it does its own thing. Yeah. We've had Miss Jenny. She's been the cook out there since seven years before we bought it. Oh, so wow. she comes with the building. Um, and then Trish, <laughs> who is, she trained me actually. Trish has been with us for about 15 years and, and we have some other long-term employees. So it does its own thing, you know, and, and it's a valuable part of the company. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. And, and part of that, that Broussard community. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Go there at lunchtime and see. <laughs> and, and Broussard, I, I, we just had a, a breakfast with the mayor and his staff this past week. And, Mayor Borks has done such a great job yeah, uh, with yeah. the community and, and, and the growth of it. And and um, I'm, we'll get into this more, I'm sure, in, in a little bit. But my goal is to have an old time out in, in that area. Got um, it. So, Got it. you know, we'll So let, let's go there. And I want to hear. So you you are about to purchase a, a, an equity stake and majority ownership piece. What is your vision or what can you share? <sighs> Man, we've talked about growth forever, uh-huh. and you know, uh, one of the beautiful things about old time is that it hasn't changed that much, you know. But that's, that's right. us Murphys, we move slow, um, you know. <laughs> Just uh, you're methodical. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Dad did buy Sandra's health food store in 2007, so that's another another growth step. But uh, my my long term goal, as well as as the rest of the family, is to have more stores. Dad spent 25 years building the brand, you know, um, yeah. an amazing brand. I guess my, my short term goal would be there's some physical expansion we need to do on, at the location on St. Mary. We've done some in the last 10 years, we've added some patio and, and done some different physical changes, but, um, there's some more updates that we need to do to make it a little bit more accessible to people and, and, uh, our employees to have, uh, better facility, maybe keeping up with a hundred year old building, which is what we is love it to really buy. really a hundred years? Is, yeah, y'all do like oh the old. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it, it's a pain. Everything's always breaking, you know. Everything. Um, let, let Walgreens get on the corner of streets. Oh my gosh. You buy a hundred year old building. It's it's fun, and there's so much charm in it. But yeah, 
there, you know, some days it's like, we just, it's can I just have a metal hard, building though. and concrete floors? I know, but it's hard to call that old time yeah, grocery. It, it, you it, know? It, and, and that's part of, honestly, like old time, we're not special. It, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good sandwich, you know, but there's yeah. nothing special about it. You know, we got great fresh bread from along the bakery and good ingredients, but it's a bunch of college kids running around screaming at each other in a chaotic place. And, you know, but that's what makes the sandwich taste so good. And, and the TLC, the love that we put into it, we, yeah, we the, make them focus on, you have to put mayo to the corner and you have to do this and that. And, yeah. and they, they look at us like, this makes no difference. No, it actually does. Yeah. It truly does. If if you slop that sandwich and, and act like you don't care, it's going to taste way worse than somebody who puts love into it. Oh, my. See, all right, there. Light bulb moment. Oh, I get it. I finally get it. Here at Company Growth Academy, we've begun teaching 20-minute growth strategies. They're free, they're fast, and they're full of information to help you grow your company. For more information and to sign up for our advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. Let's get it. Whatever you're doing, you know, whatever business you're in, put love into it. You know, make it part of what you do because I'm going to tell you, too many people are just going through the motions. And, and that is one of the challenges I see in every business I'm in is getting people to do it the right way. And and I'm going to argue with you. <laughs> I'm going to argue with you. That sandwich is special. Uh, you know, what regard, I have my favorites, right? And I have the things that I kind of alternate. You can't get that quality from everywhere. You know, there, there, there are very few people who deliver on a consistent basis like you guys do. What's your favorite sandwich? Hmm. I'd say some of the different specials that we do. Yeah. Uh, we did this Wagyu sandwich recently. I heard it was about out of this that. world. We'll have it soon. When I was a younger man and I was about a hundred pounds heavier, I ate a lot of meatball pull boys. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's so, a good uh, too. I, I don't eat as many anymore, but uh, I, I like the turkey. It's simple, but yeah, it's a good that's sandwich, one of my you know? favorites. Turkey. Well, honestly, you you think I'm crazy? I don't even like shrimp. Like I don't eat shrimp, but maybe because I swim in it. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like you know, we're about to buy. 50,000 pounds of shrimp in the next few months. So uh, like I have enough shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. hilarious. But it, the shrimp is 60% of the business. So you yeah, know, sure. it, sure. it, if we open new stores, maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. If we open new stores and all we had was a shrimp pole boy, I could have a viable business. You know, I could scale, oh, no I could, I could scale yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's better than any shrimp pole it's, boy. It's what people of. come for, you know, yeah, and, sure. and it blows my mind because it's like, Again, it's mayo, ketchup, lettuce, tomato. It's not that special. And they're driving from Houston and Dallas and Arkansas and Mississippi. Like they'll take a day trip just for that. And I'm like, so th that you asked me what has me coming back that. So let me tell you about my nephew, because you're right. I, I have a nephew that is a restaurant guy. He opens restaurant concepts and um, he'll go from Miami to uh, Austin or where I think he's in Colorado now. But anyway, when he was in Austin, he would drive home to Covington and he would, he would time his trips so he could get a shrimp po' boy. But he never called me. So I'm calling you out. You, you, you need to call your uncle when you drive into Lafayette mm -hmm. 10 minutes away. Yeah. But um, you're right. I, and I think it has to do. I, again, will argue I think the shrimp po' boy is the best there is. But it's also the environment, the experience, because you you walk in those those doors, and there are people. It's chaotic and it's loud, and it, it, you know it's there's something about the environment that is different and special. Mm -hmm. I can't take any credit of that. That's Glenn Murphy. He came up with that out of I don't know necessity. He fell into it. You know, he's just a you know a guy from Chalmette, Louisiana, and you know ended up buying a little grocery store and you know, created history. He's created an empire and, yeah, he has. and yeah. through the love he's put into it, you know, and, and look, he and I don't always get along. We butt heads, family business, but the respect I have for him and what he did to, to create what he did is unbelievable. You know, it's, it's yeah, a, it's a nationally recognized brand, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I hope to be able to continue the legacy and to, and to open more businesses, God willing. Yeah. And I, I'm going to tell you, if you put the love in that you, you do and that your dad did, it's going to go on for, another how long has it been open when he started he opened it in may of 1982 so 82 42 years. yeah 40 plus years yeah yeah, yeah man 
It's a long time. It's amazing. It's a long time. Oh, yeah. And you know that, that most companies close within 10 years, you know, mm-hmm. like more than 80%. And so uh, that's that's fascinating. So we did talk about what's next steps, but any other thing on the horizon other than I- expansion and, and growth? For the business? Yeah. Other than immediate physical expansion, you know, maybe a, a three to five year goal of mine would be to open up another location in Lafayette. Um, that's kind of always been the thought. We almost did a couple years ago and, and th- some things changed and, and um, you know, I exited the business, but mm-hmm. my my goal is to have one on the south side of Lafayette. I think um, there's a market for it. And then beyond that, you know, again, God willing, I can just operate one without burning it down, you know? Um <laughs> But I'd really like Texas is really my my dream um, really? to make That's it to Houston. Great. Um, yeah, because there's so many expats from Lafayette and Houston, or they went to school here, or they have family. That's right. And, yeah. And if you sit in our parking lot on Easter or Thanksgiving or Christmas, we're tw- uh, twice as busy, and every car has a Texas license plate. And and so I just. I see that market there. And I think we could go I-10, just stretch both ways on I-10. I think Baton Rouge would be a great place for us. Mm -hmm. Um, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach would be nice. My wife would like that one. Uh, (laughs) You'd have to get a condo. Right, right, (laughs) right. Just expense it. Uh, Yeah, so my wife is from New Mexico, so it would be neat to keep going west. But I think ultimately Texas is is just such a huge market for us. Yeah, I agree. uh, I agree. You know, with all the people in the Houston and Dallas areas and San Antonio, and, and they just, there's not much like like that there now there's some some challenges of getting we pick up fresh bread every day from I, long Day's bakery you know? exactly. and so we don't have long and bakeries and you know every yep. corner and we have a key to the bakery we literally just run over there if we need no to and get kidding. more bread but there's ways to get their bread shipped to us and, and like in like dough the dough stage or oh, par baked okay. and we'd have to bake it off kind of like subway yeah. does with uh-huh. their thing uh-huh. and so it's just a logistical step to figure out but uh I've asked him, like, hey, if I open an old time, you want to tag a, a bakery on the back of it? And he said, Ross, this is Colby at the bakery. He said, the water is different there, and it changes the taste of the bread. Unbelievable. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it, their operation is unbelievable. They're putting out, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand pieces of bread a day. Bobby, who's the second generation, but he he grew the company, Mr. Bobby, he's now sold to his he has four children. He has three sons that run it. Their operation is unbelievable. It's so cool. There's like there's like silos of flour, shooting flour all over the place, and big dough mixers, and millions of dollars of equipment in there. And it's it, incredible. He went from three people forming dough on a line to having these million dollar Japanese machines spitting out pucks of you know twenty four inch yeah. bread. It's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. It's so cool. I'd love to get him yeah. on the show. And and that's just another example of a, a third generation, your a second generation taking over these iconic businesses and and moving them forward. Uh, so I love that. I, I I'm going to ask this question, but I think I know the answer. Who do you think has been your inspiration uh, throughout your formation as an entrepreneur? I mean, obviously, my dad has had a huge part of it. So I have to I have to give so much credit to him for you know teaching me the business. Um, and you know how how to manage people and and just kind of how to grind you know like yeah that's a huge uh, part it, of it. and yep, yep. and so you know whether directly from him or in spite of some of the things you know i i I've, I've learned right i've had so many good mentors in my life you know a lot of his friends that literally helped build the business like mm-hmm. hammering <laughs> things on the walls like they've been <laughs> instrumental to me and and then i ha- i keep a a close group of friends that hold me accountable that I can be, that we can all be vulnerable with. And, you know, they help to guide me and, and I consider myself, Uh, that's that's an easy, I consider myself pretty level headed and I make good decisions, but again, I can still be a, a a real idiot sometimes, you know, you know, and we need people to keep us in check, but you know, and I, I can't go without saying my wife, I've done things in my life that I never would have imagined and I couldn't have without a wife, you know, somebody that support there, you know, so. Yeah. You're getting love, you're getting support and there is accountability because, yeah, you know, like you said, as a man, I, I want to ask you about your friend group, right? I hear this phrase is you got to know who your six are, you know? And you think, well, in the military, you're watching your back. That's your six. Um, but really it's those six people who might one day carry your casket, right? Right. You got to answer the phone. You got to, when they call, you got to go. 
And so what it sounds like to me is you have a really strong core group of people. And I love that you said you have to be accountable. You, you hold me accountable because we do stupid stuff, right? And so tell me about how that formed. Was it kind of more natural and there was just your friend group and you just got solid? Or did you one day say, you know what, we, we got we to gotta be better and let's be better together? How, how, did, how did it work out? Probably a little both. You know, I'd say my, my core six, if we're going to go by it, like it's not a it's not a group of people that, that we all grew up together. You know, um, a couple of them are people that I've worked with or worked for me that I've stayed close with. Other ones are, you know, a longtime family friend. And it, it, and so it's just kind of come together over the years. And, and I can't say that they're all individually close, you know, but they're my yeah, guys. Yeah. Right. Um, and and so. W- for me, I just, we, I have to be deliberate with them, you know, to, to make time to, to call them, uh, or, or like you said, to pick up the phone. I, I have a habit of just getting off my own and being in my head and go, go, go. And, 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 and you feel like the world's coming down on, you, you know, and then you realize like, wow, I have, you know, all I gotta do is make a phone call. And yeah, you know, yeah. even if it's just to, to vent about something, you got somebody there to listen, you yep. know, um, or, or advice. And so I'm very fortunate to have a group of guys that are, I mean, named Dustin, you know, consider him a longtime friend. He was at my wedding. He he got his car booted um, at my wedding. <laughs> uh, he's always getting yeah, into trouble. He's, he's a goof. He's a goof. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just just blessed. You know, these these men are you know they're they're good men. They're they're professionals. They're husbands. They're fathers. They're they're you know God fearing, God seeking men. And, and I, I need it. You know. Thank you for sharing that. That's huge. Huge. We've covered a lot of things. Is there anything that you want to share with the uh, audience? that I haven't asked you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I mean, it's a little cliche, but like patience and perseverance, you know, I I was given a really unique opportunity to come into a a business like I did, you know, and for those people that have to start from nothing, like that's so hard. (laughs) Like, you know, I don't know if I could do that. Now I, I believe that I could, but you know, 10 years ago, no way, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have the, the moxie, the drive to do it, but like I said earlier, one thing I struggled with was letting my self sense of self worth be influenced by the ups and downs, you know, and and just having been through life, you know, and and you know the the struggles and the sufferings of life, and I think what I realized is that you know there's seasons for everything. There's good and bad. There's good and bad seasons for business. There's seasons of suffering. There's seasons of joy in life, and it's made me more empathetic. <laughs> To people, you know, I mean, let's be real. Being a Catholic schoolboy in Lafayette, Louisiana, there's a little bubble, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And correct, you know, correct. we and and have to break ourselves of a little bit of bias and judgment, and you know, because we're kind of like given a golden, you know, like a golden platter to stand on, and, and there's beauty in that, but it's a little unrealistic. And and I think what I've realized is like, you know, suffering shows no bias, right? Yeah, yeah, you know? you're right. And and everybody. Everybody is touched by it, you know, in in whatever way. And so, to just to know that about people, and and I think what you know, if if I can say I've been successful professionally, it's because I try and keep genuine relationships with people. I've been given I'm an opportunity to be in a leadership position, you know, be it with employees and they look up to me, or you know, as a leader in the community, people. As, as weird as it is, people are like, man, the old time guy's a, you know, a leader in the community. And again, there's a burden to that. But I think w- what I've realized is no nobody wants to, or at least in this generation, in my generation, it's hard to follow a leader that acts like they're not human. You know, so what's been successful for me in in when I'm able to mentor and work with people is to be real with them, you know, uh, not process all my my issues with them, but to to let them in on, hey, you know what, I can be a real dummy. I make mistakes. I'm hurting. I'm scared. I'm, you know, and and it gives me, I'm able to meet them on their, you know, at their level a little bit more and develop a relationship of trust that, you know, when it, when the time is called is when time is called to to push their buttons and to drive, they trust that. I'm doing it because I love them, you know, yeah, yeah. and I'm looking out for them, not mm-hmm. because I'm just a, you know, a cold hearted jerk that only cares about money. That's been a huge point of success and something I, I resonate on a lot to try and continue to be that and not, not get too wayward from that. I, I have a, 
strong suspicion that you're going to do very well when you take it over and go to another level. Thank you. I'm so proud of you, man. Um, so as you deal with customers, employees, the community, how do, how do you try to leave people different and better just because they met you? I guess go back to that same point is just to, to be genuine with people. Um, yeah, yeah. not every interaction is great. You know, I'm, I can be brash and, and, you know, in the heat of things, if I'm in the business, of course, prayer helps that, you mm-hmm. know, um, you know, and I think for, for me, what has helped keep me grounded is a very disciplined lifestyle. I might be crazy, but wake up really early and, and dedicate certain time to prayer and, and spend some time in front of the blessed, blessed sacrament. And, and that, that first three or four hours of my day, having a healthy prayer life, a healthy, like physical exercise and how I eat. Like that dictates how how I am with people, and if and if I'm off from that, I get cranky, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and I'm not happy, you know, and I and I get tired more easily. Um, so I have for me, I have to stay very disciplined. Yeah, I mean, prayer is the biggest thing, and I don't always do a good job of it, and I need to do more of it. But allowing allowing scripture or allowing um, you know, the catechism in a year podcast with Father Mike Schmitz or correct, correct. or listening to Jordan Peterson and getting some you know some some good tips or listening to your podcast like. I need all those things to to help me wash away all the, the, the filth that's in my, my brain, you know, because we're so inundated with so much junk and it it's just, and it's just so easy to to be a jerk, man, you know? <laughs> like it's so easy to be a jerk, you know? Yeah, it's hard to just say don't be a jerk, but yeah, cause, cause we're, life we're is dealing hard. with a lot of stuff and it's a weird time to be alive. Life is hard and it's and yeah. it's it's hard to be a good person, man. It really yeah. is, you know. Uh, yeah. So find people that are role models, you know, and, and and I have those, you know. Thanks for tuning in to I Finally Get It. For more information on Ross and what he's got going on, please visit the show notes. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Hey, at Company Growth Academy, we've started doing 20-minute teachings. These are 20-minute growth strategies every month. All you have to do to get on the advanced notification list is go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. If you're an entrepreneur and you have a light bulb moment that you think would help other entrepreneurs, please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.